Hey, I'm Brian Van, SportBikeTrackHere.com. Today we're going to break down the Evol Technologies Ninja 400 slash Yamaha R3 because this set will fit either bike. Clip on install on our Moto America Ninja 400 race bike. Okay, if you followed the build series for this bike, you'd know we already had race clip-ons on the bike. We had the Woodcraft Ninja 400 specific clip-ons. These are super awesome. We have had these on here since 2018. They've done a fantastic job for us all along the way. Kids been riding the bike real good, okay? Why did we want to make a change? Let's start with that. This is where the Ninja 400 Woodcraft clip-ons sit. So you can see the, the height is significantly more and I'm doing the best I can to get that mocked up as close as possible than what we have here with the Evol Technologies, okay? When I look at Max's riding, when I look at pictures, my Brian J. Nelson pictures, right, and the other photographers that are taking pictures of him out there, and I see him ride, when Max is in the corner, right, he is very upright on the bike. He doesn't hang off super far. Part of that is his style, and I also believe part of that was just the overall ergonomics of the bike, so I wanted to make a change to see if it would benefit him and encourage him to hang off more. Why did I want to do that? When we were at VIR, the kid really picked up the pace. You watch his Sunday race too, right? The kid is, he's four tenths off the junior cup lap record, which was set, I think it was Tyler Scott got it there at, uh, at VIR. Four tenths off that. If you know if you're four tenths off a lap record on anybody, you are hauling the fucking mail. No doubt about it. When you do that, you're, you're using all the available lean angle, you're braking as late as possible, so on and so forth. When he came in at the end of the race and he, he fell, he was right there with that group, I mean, nose to tail the entire race until the last lap. When he came in, and he goes, you know what? He goes, I fell back a little bit and I, I just couldn't stay in that draft on that last lap. He goes, I was dragging shit everywhere and I thought I was about to wad the bike up, okay? said his legs felt a little bit tired too, that could be part of it. So I wanted to see if there was anything we could do to the bike to help make changes. I've already made adjustments to the rear sets previously at Laguna Seca in 2020 to get him more ground clearance. And now I wanted to see if I could do something that would get him just a little further off the bike. Max is a big kid, he's 155 pounds, which is to the heavy side for the junior cup racers that are out there right now. So getting him just a little bit more off the bike could make some pretty significant difference. My hope is having these bars out, and these are out much wider now than they were before. It's gonna open up the cockpit a little bit for him, and it's also gonna open up that pocket so he can dip off the bike, you know, get that shoulder and get that head out there, hopefully. This is gonna force him to do it because it's sitting, what, well over an inch lower. It's gonna force him to do it and hopefully open up just a little bit of ground clearance for him that he's able to use, let's hope, to improve upon his finish. So that was my motivation behind it. This is a really unique purpose-built set of clip-ons. They don't come with instructions in the package, right? These are intended to be installed by someone who knows what they're doing, okay? It requires some modification to the bodywork of the motorcycle. What's kick-ass about the Woodcraft, right? There is no modification, man. They work with the stock body work, they work with the armor bodies, they work with the hot bodies. I'm sure they work with every, every brand of the race body work. That is kick ass, right? This is a quality part. We didn't change it because it's a bad part. You look at these, the design is different. You don't have the, the tube being uh, captured by a clamp. The clip-on tube itself, I don't know if you're probably not gonna be able to see the threads, but there's threads in there, man. And there is a stem, and it's a multi-part stem. There's like a piece that bolts on the end to about here to increase the structural strength of it. And then there's the threaded portion up here, probably goes about as far as the clamp on the brake master cylinder. And then this has wrench flats on it. You literally, with a 19 millimeter wrench, you're threading this bad boy on there, okay? They come completely assembled. I like to take shit apart and look at it. So, you know, I took them apart, took a good look at it. When I took it apart, I did put just a little, cause they use Loctite from the factory. I just used a little butane torch. I heated this up just a little bit right here. I was able to wrench it right off. 
as I'm going through the install. The body work, right, we have a hodgepodge of body work. We got hot bodies, I got, I got armor bodies. What we're running right now is I am still running this stock gauge cluster plastic. I have to. The piece you look just like this before I install the clip-ons, okay? I need to be able to hold the dash. The moto holder's fairing stay that we use doesn't mount the dash directly to it. And the bodywork that I have on there now, the upper, you can see it's open right here. Okay, so you need this panel back here to finish this off so you don't have just, just wide open zone. I also am still running these OEM side panels, black plastic like this, and then the upper fastens right here. So I took a look at what I had going on. The clearance issues right here, it was all drag all the time. It was 100% not gonna happen, okay? You, you could not leave this. So I started looking at the panel and just began trimming. And this is what I landed on. And I think in the end, I got a good result. Remember, this is bolted down here by the windscreen. It's captured here by a little locator tab and some rubber grommets and then back here. So it's held in there pretty nicely, right? Especially once you have the windscreen and the upper on, you're 100% good. These two little pieces back here, they just help me hold the upper and those side panels in place. Everything is cut out, so now we have a ton of clearance. You can see I really, I spent a lot of time trimming here. This is super important up here in the brake area. That cannot touch anything. There can be nothing at, at any degree of steering head rotation that would put pressure on the brakes. So I really toiled over that to make sure that there was nothing that could happen. The way these clip-ons are set up is very, very unique. This upper half here, okay, this top portion of the clamp that goes over the top of the four tube, and then the bar itself, that is a one-piece unit. There is another clamp that goes underneath the top triple tree. Once that clamp is on there, there are two bolts, right, one here and one here, that bolt the upper and lower piece together. So in the event of a crash that say it's more than just a bar, and I've done some research, I know other teams that are riding these, I know how well they are crashing, I know what's happening. So I have one full set available as spare, and then I have one lone tube. Odds are it's gonna be just a tube, but you wanna be ready with the whole thing. When you're spending all this money to go Moto America racing, you wanna make sure that you're prepared for any situation to get your rider back out on the track on a safe, functioning race bike. So in the event that the damage is more than just the tube, Take these two fasteners out here. Your, your pivot adjustment, which we're gonna cover in a second, which is bitching, and undo this bolt here, whoop, comes right off, pop, pop, pop. You're back out there in just mere minutes. You know, it's a little more involved than replacing, say, a, a clip-on tube that's held with a compression clamp, but at the end of the day, I think the benefit we're gonna get from the new ergonomic position is going to outweigh the little additional time spent. This allows you to adjust and really get the sweep super even, then it locks it in place, okay? You can see I've got both sides really even. You can see here with some witness marks. We certainly did some experimenting at, at different positions, and I think we landed on what Max likes the most. From what I can discern here, having not installed these on the R3, only on the 400, I know this set fits both bikes. I believe the lower slot here is for the R3, and then the upper slot here on the clip-ons is for the Ninja 400. Okay, so just for your reference, that is how that works. Now, we are also running the AIM Solo lap timer, right, to, to back up what we have here with the dash, and when we come back, I'm gonna show you the solution that we have, that we had previously to mount the lap timer and what we are using now. Okay, so here's what we did have with the Woodcraft clip-ons, and I just made this right. Certainly no master fabricator, but this is the AIM Solo lap timer uh, bracket bolted to just a flat stock of aluminum. I use these two holes here that are now being occupied by the rotational bolts for the uh, Evolve Tech clip-ons. I was going to start cutting that up and make it so it would go over this, and then I remember, I'm like, dude, you forgot all about the kick-ass 419 racing 
aim solo lap timer brackets you're selling available in 41 millimeters which fits this fork perfectly so now what i got to do is i'm going to bolt this bad boy up here the, the lap timer bolts right to it super duper secure everything is kick ass so we have that as a backup when the kid's on the track he, he likes the way the lap time is displayed especially during qualifying he uses it for a tool and you know we want to make sure that he has everything that he needs when he's out there to do the best job that he can do. Our job is to provide the kid with a good bike. The kid's job is to ride fast and don't smash up the old man's motorcycle, right? Because then I have to work. So there you have it. If you have any questions, and, I, and you know, we're just, we're, we're pressed for time right now. I, I got to get this thing put back together. We got to get it loaded up. We're leaving tomorrow. This is a relatively close round for us, only seven hours away. So I have a little bit of time, right? But, uh, with the race body work on it, like I showed you already, you know, you're certainly making modifications there. It, there's a DB holder's fairing stay out there in the market that you bolt your dash right to. You know, if you're running a different brand of body work, you can, you can use that too. At the end of the day, I think what this shows you is there's options and it's also gonna show you that this is not one of those installs where you're like, yeah, I'll just do this in 20 minutes, man. It's gonna be a piece of cake. Oh no. Yeah, you're, you're most likely going to have interference with your body work, be it, you know, the OEM panel here, if you're still using that, or even the race body work panel itself. So this is one of those projects. You have to have some skill, you have to have some patience, and you're going to have to make some modifications to get the motorcycle to its best possible place. The quality of the part is fantastic. Steve over there, right? Kick-ass dude. He's really putting a lot of effort and energy into this. This stuff's been in the marketplace for a long time. It's proven. I know other teams that are using this, and this is what motivated me. Even after I met Steve, I talked to my buddy, I think Stoney, right? At Landers Racing is using these. Got some really good feedback from Stoney, and we decided to do it ourselves. If you have any questions, leave those in the comment section of this video. I answer all that stuff myself, and I'm always here to make sure you get the same result from your project we get from ours.